Hi guys and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So this is part two of my VHF to microwave homemade transceiver kit. Now in the last video I covered the brains of this project which was the Langstone and that's an SDR transceiver application which runs on a Pi 5. Now in this video I'll cover what I've done since that video. Now you will notice on the right of the screen I now have a proper radio microphone. And this is now fully integrated into Langstone via an all scan UCI 120, which is a radio interface that I covered in another video. Now, more on that shortly. You'll also notice just in front of the Pi 7 inch touchscreen that we have a little circuit board with a couple of switches, a rotary encoder, and a little Arduino. Well, if you remember in the last video I showed you, you could use a USB mouse to control Langstone. Things like change in frequency or adjust parameters like volume, squelch and menu settings and even change the cursor that's underneath each of the frequency digits. Well, another way which was documented in the Langstone wiki page was to use an Arduino Pro micro board, which only costs a few quid. Now, this allows us to use an encoder of your choice along with three buttons. Now, the program for this is available free of charge from GitHub. And in essence, this program makes the Arduino Pro Micro act like a USB mouse, but you can have your own hardware, like switches and encoders. And this is perfect for making your own front panel controls. Now you can use the Arduino IDE application to load this program onto the Pro Micro board. And there's also some parameters which you can alter in the code before compiling, depending on the encoder that you use. Now you could use a big weighted encoder that costs a lot of money, or you could just use something cheap like I have here. In fact, this encoder is also a push button, so that takes care of that third available switch. Now, I just made this board as a bit of a prototype just to make sure I'd loaded the program onto the Arduino correctly and that it worked okay with Langstone. The Arduino is just pushed into some headers, not soldered, so I can reuse it when I make the final board for the front panel. Now the next part of this project I worked on was making sure that the GPIO pins on the Pi 5 worked as intended when using Langstone. Now what I mean by this is that on the GitHub page, the supported Pi 5 GPIO pins can be selected to go high or low, depending on which band is selected. Now this is controlled by band bits, which is a setting found within Langstone menu. Now there are eight band select outputs, and here I only have four of them connected to a simple LED. When each band is selected, a specific GPIO pin will go high, as in signal level high, and it will illuminate the LED. Now the LED is just for my reference to show that it's actually working. Now these are important because we'll need a way to control relays, relays that will be used to switch the RF path between low pass filters and RF amplifiers, depending on which band has been selected within the application. Now, another important GPIO pin is pin 40 or GPIO 21 on the Pi. Now, this provides a high signal when Langstone is in transmit and then a low signal when receiving. Now, this is extremely useful so that we can engage any antenna relays to switch the RF path between transmit and receive. And we can also use this to activate PTT lines or apply power to a selected band's final RF amplifier. Now, this PTT also includes a 100 millisecond delay which is quite useful when it comes to sequencing. Now, the most exciting addition to this project is I'm now using an all-scan UCI 120, and that's instead of a USB sound fob and cheap microphone. But if you heard on the last video, it sounded really bad. Now, the UCI 120 is connected by one single USB cable to the Pi 5, and it provides both a standard microphone connection with proper audio filtering and gain controls, along with an actual speaker output meaning I do not have to worry about building any audio amplification circuits. The UCI 120 does it all in one simple box. Now, as mentioned earlier, I have covered this product in another video, but let's just take a closer look. The rear panel offers a line out, mic gain adjustment with rotary control or a three position boost switch. There's also an insert option and a speaker output, which means you can connect a speaker directly to this unit. Then, of course, we have a USB-C socket, which is where you plug it into the Pi 5. 
Now on the front, there's a proper microphone socket. Now I'm using here an Alinco microphone, which works perfectly. You can actually get these really cheap online and they're readily available, all pre-wired and we'll just plug and play. There's also some status LEDs and a volume control, which changes the output volume on that speaker out socket, which is found on the rear. Now, of course, this will be mounted inside the box and each connection will either come out to the front panel or the rear panel. This is uh, M0 DQW, Mark Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey testing audio, M0 DQW. Your audio is perfect. Here is your playback. So just to recap, this provides a complete sound card solution. It's a microphone input and speaker output. So no need to mess around with amplification circuits and speakers and USB sound cards and fobs and having to worry about ground loops and things like that. Now, what's also nice is that after speaking with G4 EML, that's Colin who created Langstone, he added support for the microphone's PTT button, Vision. This means you do not even have to press the PTT button on screen. You simply hold and use the microphone, just like a regular radio transceiver. Now, I think this is the first plug and play solution that's been su that's supported on Langstone ever. So it's a really nice addition. This is uh, M0 DQW testing audio transmission from the Langstone V3 via the AllScan UCI 120 and an Alinco handheld microphone. Obviously all of the uh, gain control can be changed within software in Langstone or actually within the UCI 120 itself. Uh, this is Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey and Zero DQW testing the uh, transmit audio on upper sideband using the Langstone and also using the AllScan UCI 120 USB communications interface. And I'd like to take a moment to thank JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. Now JLC PCB provide easy, affordable and reliable PCB and PCBA solutions empowering electronic engineers to develop projects efficiently. Now, JLC PCB website is extremely easy to use and ordering PCBs from JLC PCB is effortless. Just simply upload your Gerber file to get an instant quote and place your order in minutes. It's as easy as shopping online. Now you can get one to eight layer PCBs for just $2 and with efficient large scale production, this reduces cost and brings you unbeatable prices. Quality and lead time is highly reliable and all in-house production ensures quality stability, especially with their strict quality control in every process. You can have your PCBs produced in less than 24 hours if you need them in a rush. Easy to use, affordable to make and reliable to trust. You can always count on JLC PCB. Now don't miss out JLC PCB six layer PCB special. You can get $30 off with a coupon and enjoy top quality six layer PCBs for just $5. Thanks again to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. Now here we can see the USB connections going into the Pi 5. Two are for the Pluto Plus, which I'll talk about in a moment. And one is for the control panel switchboard that I made. And the other is for the UCI 120. Then in the last video, I got asked about the RF amplifiers that I was going to use. Now, the first band that I'll get working with the Langstone and this project will be VHF. And I recently come across these little PCBs and modules from an online shop called Enigma. Now, these are fairly cheap and will produce around 8 watts if driven with at least 18 milliwatts. The PCB has an attenuator built in, which consists of a resistor network. However, I'll most likely remove these so that I can use a lower input. Now, the heatsink and fan did not come with the PCB or module, but you do need to use a heatsink as it can get quite warm. Now, this is not the final build for this part, and I'll most likely create a separate video just on this when I have all the parts I need. Now, this VHF RF module should be good for FM and SSB. However, I may need to perform some modifications to the BIOS when using SSB. But as I said, I'll make a dedicated video on this once I know exactly how it will work. Now, when I move on to UHF or 70 centimeter portion of this build, I may use this amplifier. 
Now, this is a 25-watt UHF amplifier that I got from Banggood, and it was fairly cheap. It also works very well with only a 10 milliwatt drive, so you can adjust the input range. Now, I'll leave a link to this down in the video description. And yeah, I did build a low-pass filter for 70 centimeters, similar to how I built one for VHF. So those nasty odd harmonics coming from the Pluto are pretty much gone, so they don't reach the input of the amplifier. Now, Enigma do sell a board similar to the VHF module I showed you a moment ago for the UHF band. But again, nothing is finalized just yet, and I need to perform more tests. Now, please excuse this rather crude drawing here but I want to show you what we're trying to achieve for the RF path. Down here on the bottom left, we have the Pluto SDR, which is connected to the Raspberry Pi over USB. Now the Pluto SDR has two usable RF ports, the receive port and the transmit port. Up here is our antenna, and assuming that we're just gonna use one antenna, this has to have some way to switch between TX and RX. So maybe an RF relay of some kind will be needed. The RX side of that relay is connected to the RX port of the Pluto SDR. And I have already thought that I may need to include some bandpass filters, but that's for another day to think about. Now the transmit side is a little bit more complicated. First, we'll need low pass filters. In fact, I've drawn three low pass filters here, but really we only really need two. One for two meters and one for 70 centimeters. There's a 23 centimeters is too high in frequency, for any dodgy harmonics from the Pluto to be a problem. Again, we'll need to switch the output from the Pluto to the corresponding selected band filter. These filters then go on to their own amplifiers. Now it could be possible that other amplifiers are needed or drivers to bring the Pluto's output level up to a level which will drive the amplifier. So this may not be 100% accurate come by the end of the build. Now, assuming we are going to use just one single antenna port for all bands, receive and transmit, I will need another RF relay to switch the output of the amplifiers to the antenna. Now, all of these RF relays will be controlled via the GPIO pins on the Pi 5, which in turn is controlled via the Langstone application. Now, none of this is final yet, and I may just choose to have separate outputs for each band, but for 2 and 70, I would really like to just use one antenna. If anyone knows of any low logic RF switches which would work well for this solution, then let me know. Now I've seen some on Minikits, which is a great website based in Australia, but they only support a two-way RF switch. Plus, due to the new tax laws in the UK, I have to order over $250 worth of kits before I can place an order. Now I have been toying with the idea of making my own PCBs and maybe even using JLC PCB to make them. Now, something I want to share with you guys is some information about the Pluto Plus that I'm using. Now, this is inside the Pluto Plus that I've been using for this project so far. And to me, well, it just doesn't look right. Now, someone has actually produced a clone of the Pluto Plus, and it looks far more complicated than the original. The RF side is not even covered with a tin can, like we can see on the original Pluto Plus. Now, I spoke with the creator of the Pluto Plus, and he confirmed that this is actually a knockoff or a clone, well, of his clone of the Pluto SDR. This also has a much lower output than the original Pluto Plus on all the bands that I tested, plus some of the other features and functions that's supposed to work on this just didn't work. For now, I'll continue to use this board for testing, so if I blow it up, it doesn't really matter. But for the final finished build, I will be using an authentic Pluto Plus. As some of you mentioned in the comments of the last video, part one of this build, about the stability when receiving or transmitting. Well, I do have a fix for that. And even though the original Pluto Plus is extremely stable, even up on 2.4 GHz, I will be using one of these. Now, Leo Bodner have kindly donated this GPS locked clock source, which is programmable from 1 Hz to 1.1 GHz. The Pluto Plus requires a 40 MHz clock source with a 3.3 volt signal injected into its onboard external reference socket. So this is perfect for that. It also comes with a really good quality USB-C cable, which is used to power the module. And it also comes with a high quality GPS receiver. You can program these using software on your computer to set the clock frequency. Now I'll show you all of that in more detail when we get to that stage in the build process. 
Okay, so that's it for part two. Now, what I'm currently looking at right now is a box to put all of this in, and I'm swaying towards a 4U rack chassis case. The depth I'm not too sure about just yet, but from my calculation, a 4U will support the height of a Pi 7 inch touchscreen perfectly. Now, if you have any questions or even any suggestions about anything that I've covered in this video, then please feel free to comment below. All input and comments will be accepted and appreciated. Now, this project will be trial and error, of course it will be, and we'll all learn as we go along. But eventually, I will get it finished. Well, maybe, because in any ham radio project, is it actually truly finished? Anyway, until the next video, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.